I'd like to invite up uh, one of our keynote speakers from the day, the active mayor of Thunder Bay, Canada, Frank Puglia. Thank you and good morning, everyone. It's always a pleasure to start the day and with uh, some positive uh, news, so welcoming, you know, we're welcoming remarks and um, as a city councilor and representing the city of Thunder Bay, but not only the city of Thunder Bay, as an elected official that uh, is at the forefront of using technology to as a tool to enable positive outcomes and get people involved. I'm going to uh, speak to you about uh, how we receiving the information from the citizens should be able to bring that together in a way that again produces uh, positive outcomes. Because at the end of the day, the concept of smart cities is, has to be people-centric. It's not enough to say we got the technology to me and to those that I communicate with in the front lines of our, like our citizens, technology is only a tool, is an enabler. For example, when we can use technology to measure the, and help with measure the impact of climate change, there are so many things that are now affecting cities, small towns, small communities, medium-sized cities, where this can really make a difference. So the concept of the ecosystem that we will be discussing today and many of you and the presenters will be talking in different aspects of what smart city means in terms of vertical integration, but also to be able to broaden that vision of where cities can be as agents of change for the future. You know, when uh, higher orders of government fund these type of projects, they always want to be part at the table. They want to collaborate. They want to see actions and they want to see results. So being in the front lines is important for us, to those, for cities, to make that happen in a, such a, in a collaborative way. And um, I can speak from experience when I have a town hall meeting in two-way communication with our citizens. The fact that we are now able to live stream, I'm on Facebook Live right now, I'm saying hello to my friends and colleagues from Thunder Bay, from friends around the world, that uh, we can communicate in a way that we could not do before. It's a two-way communication. You know, they, I will be receiving the messages from them later, what I could have done better, <laughs> but, uh, or what they appreciated about our message. So when we talk to people, when we talk to our, the people that we represent, at every level, it's important that we use the technology to communicate and provide that vision, and digital media is a great enabler. When we're trying to attract talent to our cities, it's not how do cities grow. We need to be able to attract the talent, the people that are dynamic, that are creating that vision of the future, but also we can keep them in our towns or cities, but we should be able to give them a reason to come back. Being able to provide that vision a, about a progressive city that enables technology to help people, I think it's a great tool that will attract that kind of talent that we all need to move forward. When we run any operation, having been in the private sector and, and also for government, you know, there's always a bottom line, there's always efficiency, there's always deadlines that you have to meet you have to produce results. So when we run a city, we need to be able to provide services at a reasonable cost. So how does technology help us to, to, to do that? And so we're using that in ways that we were, was never able before. Efficiency, integration of services, collapsing the silos mentality, cross-functional teams, they all come together when we enable the technology in a way that could not be done before resolving local problems, shared values and responsibilities and making citizens part of the solution. It's all part of the kind of technology we are looking at today. Establishing strong connection at regional, national and global level. We're doing that right now because people are seeing that from anywhere in the world. Your speeches can reach thousands of people, millions of people, maybe more from around the globe. So it's not just a local 
but it's also regional and, and, and global. Increasing the city capacity, the 2018 recession has hit so many countries. Originally, I come from Italy, and when I go and visit my family there, I see that some of the struggles they're going through. Some of it take, it's taking 10 years to restructure the labor market to make reforms that make a difference in the lives of people that produce good results. And now all at once, there's a new focus on using this type of technology that enables countries to be more efficient, to create new opportunities because things are changing. The manufacturing base is going to artificial intelligence. So there's a great dynamic changes and we need to be on top of that. And uh, last but not least, I wanted to just address the last point how a smart city and the type of, you know, your initiative here can help uh, address issues of social inclusion, of empowering people. In my presentation, I'll be showing you how Thunder Bay is using this to revitalize and turn around some very difficult social uh, determinants of health where people are uh, marginalized can now become full members of our community. So I wanted to leave you with that. I want to take too long and this just wanted to welcome everyone here from any parts of the country and the world and uh, for the second day and wishing you all fantastic a second Smart Cities Day and look forward uh, to your presentations as well and engaging with you one-on-one -on -one and sharing information. I think that's what we're here, that's what this is all about. So thanks again and uh, see you around. <laughs>